The challenge of the Yukon. Hung King! Hung, you husky! Underdog King, swiftest and strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes the trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the challenge of the Yukon. Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mountie Police who preserved law and order in the new Northwest country, where the greed for wealth and power led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, King, met that challenge, and justice ruled triumphant. Inspector Grayson of the Northwest Mounted Police looked stern as his steel blue eyes bored into those of Sergeant Preston, who stood before him calmly at Mounted Police headquarters in Dawson. I have a report here, Sergeant, that will need a lot of explaining. You've broken a rule of the Mounted Police. The report states that you entered a dog race out of uniform, won it, accepted the prize money, and then you were disqualified when they discovered that you were a member of the Mounted Police. Is this true? Yes, sir. The first black mark against your record, Sergeant. Can't understand it. I couldn't believe it. Have you any explanation, whatever? Yes, sir, I have. It'll take some time to tell it, though. Well, take whatever time you need. Pull up a chair and sit down. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Lie down here, King. Oh, I understand that lead dog of yours was a big factor in your winning the race. I suppose your desire to show him off was too much of a temptation. No, sir. That had nothing to do with my entering the dog race. Well, whatever it is, get on with it. And it better be good, or it means one of those stripes comes off of your sleeve. I know that, sir. But even if that happens, I'd do the same thing over again, under the same circumstances. Ah, you always were a man with a mind of your own. I hope it doesn't get you into trouble. Well, as you know, sir, I was taking my first patrol to Rampart. No one in the town knew me. I know. On the way, I stopped at Jean LaRue's roadhouse at Grand Forks. It was late getting in. Gene had gone to bed. But there was another man staying there that night. When I went in, he was sitting by the stove. I'm Jim Daly. Live in Rampart. Well, I'm Bill Preston. On my way to your town. Uh, you're a sergeant, aren't you? Yeah. I've never been to Rampart before. <laughs> I thought I'd never seen you. You going there for the dog races? No, just a new patrol. Going to look the place over a bit. Yeah, sure a fine lead dog you have there. Yes, <laughs> I think so. Are you the man who's been winning all the dog races all over the country? <laughs> no, that's my son, Bill. He has a championship team. Everybody's betting he'll walk off with the big championship prize next week. Well, I'll be there then. I'm looking forward to it. You must be very proud of your son. He's won a lot of money this year. Well, Sergeant, maybe you'll think I'm crazy. But I'd give anything I own if Bill would lose that race next week. Well, why would you want him to lose? Let me tell you. Everything went along fine with Bill until he won his third race. My best friend and neighbor, Pete Grant, and his daughter, Sally, were standing with me at the finishing line. Sally and Bill had been raised together, and Pete and I have always thought they'd marry each other as a matter of course. Sally had helped Bill train his dogs. The race was close, and everyone was wild with excitement. <laughs> I'm mighty proud. Bill, you were wonderful. <laughs> Thanks, Sally, honey. Uh, say, hey, who's this? Hello. You are the winner of the dog race, no? My, uh, yeah. I am Maria Torres. I sing at the Northern Cafe. Today, I just come in time to see you become a hero. Maria, I say, you must be first one to congratulate me. Well, that's... That's very nice of you, Miss, uh... Maria, if you please. Uh, Maria, uh, this is my father and, uh, uh, and Sally Grant. How do you do? How are you? You are father of these wonderful men? Oh, you are to be congratulated. Thanks. They will present the prizes over at our cafe. Maybe you will take me there now, yes? Uh, why, uh, 
I was going with Dad and Sally, oh, but... They can uh, follow. <laughs> well, uh, all right. I, uh, I'll see you later, Dad and, uh, and Sally. Well, of all the nerve. I... I guess we better take the dog team home. Bill seems to have forgotten about it. That was the beginning of it, Sergeant. From then on, Bill acted as if he was bewitched or something. He spent all his money on Marie and hangs around the cafe all the time. Seems to have forgotten Sally completely. Poor kid. Oh, maybe it's just a phase he's going through. He'll get over it. No, it's more serious than that. Just before I left town this time, I heard that Bill had promised that singer Maria the prize money from his next race for an engagement present. Oh. It'll be a thousand dollars thrown away. I don't think she'll ever marry him. That part don't worry me too much. Of course, she knows I'm pretty wealthy. Money she's after. I wish someone would beat him in that race. He'd find out what she was then. Was he quite sure of winning? There ain't a dog team in the country can touch his. He's a cinch to win. He's got the smartest lead dog I ever saw. Oh. Well, I'm afraid you can't say that anymore, Daly. You've seen King tonight. <laughs> uh, King? Oh, you mean this dog here? I've had a lot of dogs, but I've never seen his equal. Um, how's the rest of your team? Well, <laughs> I think it's the best team in the North Country. Uh, Sergeant, why don't you enter the race? Maybe you could beat Bill. Oh, I couldn't do that. It's against regulations. We're not allowed to accept prize money. Well, uh, could you let someone else borrow your team? No, that wouldn't help much. King wouldn't work for anyone but me. Uh, there was only some way. Sergeant, why couldn't you go in the race under another name? You're just about my size. I could let you have some clothes. Nobody in Rampart knows you. No, I'm afraid I couldn't do that without permission from headquarters. There's no time for that. Uh, but I'm sure they'd understand. You could tell you were who you were afterwards. Just keep quiet long enough for Bill to find out what kind of a girl this Maria is. Oh, I'm thinking about Sally, too. Poor kid, this is breaking her heart. I, uh, I wish I could help you. Uh, do this much for me, Sergeant. Let me give you some clothes, and you take that uniform off and come into Rampart with me tomorrow without letting people know who you are. I want you to meet Sally. Then you could decide what to do. Well, sir, Jim Daly argued with me for an hour. The next day, I went with him to Rampart wearing his clothes, and Jim introduced me as Preston Williams. Hmm. After I met Sally, I understood why Jim had been so anxious. She was sweet and natural and very much in love with Bill. I see. But, sir, her face looked strained and troubled, and her eyes were sad. Then that night, I went to the Northern Cafe alone. Maria Torres was sitting at the next table with the owner of the cafe. I listened to their conversation. I do like the idea of this engagement, Maria. Oh, surely, Mon ami, you are not jealous of one so young. You are afraid I will marry him? No, you ain't that foolish, I hope. Maybe you can think of a better way for me to get $1,000. I don't mind you picking up some extra money, but if you get yourself engaged to him... Maybe... That does not mean I must marry him. His papa, maybe he will give me something not to. He has much money, I am told. So, uh, you think the old man will buy you off, huh? Oui. Then maybe I get one more thousand dollars. You've done pretty well so far. Soon we will have enough to leave this cold country. Then I will not have to get engaged to young men. <laughs> it will not be long. That decided me, Inspector. The next day, I entered the race under the name of Preston Williams. I told Jim not to bet much on his son, but to spread the word that he was staking everything he had on the boy to win. I see. The weather was clear the day of the race. My dogs were in fine condition. And I must admit, sir, that I enjoyed the excitement. The course was set to Stevens Creek and back, and going by trail or cutting cross country was optional. About halfway, there was a large plain with a heavy crust of snow covering it. Bill Daly was ahead of the other teams, and I was right behind him. He flew over the crust of snow, taking the cross-country shortcut. I let King make his own decision. He started out on the crust across the plain, and suddenly he stopped. What's wrong with you, King? One, fella! Mush! You're turning the team around! What's wrong, fella? Well, I guess I know 
I guess you know what you're doing. But Daly isn't breaking through. All right, boy, have it your way. On King! On You mean to say, Sergeant, that you let that dog decide to go the long way around? Well, I knew King must be pretty sure of what he was doing, sir. His judgment's been better than mine many times. Huh. We took the regular trail, which meant about three miles farther, going around the plane instead of across it. All the other teams followed Bill Daly's lead, and they all ended up retracing their steps and taking the long way around as I had done. King was right then? The crust of snow wasn't quite strong enough, and the dogs began to break through. King knew it wouldn't hold. Of course, that gave me a beautiful start, and I held my lead without pushing the team. I must say, however, that Bill Daly had a wonderful dog team. He wasn't far behind me at the finish, and I loafed a bit to make the finish exciting. Bill was almost up to me when I gave King the word to hurry. Compared to Bill's team, mine was fresh. On King! I sure would like to have seen it. Well, I beg your pardon, Inspector. I, uh, <clears throat> uh, go on with your story, Sergeant. Yes, I sir. forgot myself for a moment. <laughs> well, um, that night I was given the grand prize at the Northern Cafe. Maria was there. When I walked up, she was talking to Bill. She wasn't very happy about the whole thing. <laughs> oh, you are not such a hero tonight. I do not get my engagement present that you say you will win. I'll get it for you some way, Maria. Well, hello, Daly. You ran a nice race today. It's a fine team you had. Uh, thanks. I gotta admit, your lead dog is smarter than mine. But if we hadn't tried that shortcut, the story might be different. Well, I'm really sorry about your father's losing all his money on that race. I guess he was certain you'd win. What do you mean, his father lose money? Bill, this is true? Well, I... I guess it is, Maria. I... I hated to tell you. I... <laughs> you are not such a hero now. Uh, you, Mr. Uh, Preston Williams. Maybe you would like to come sit with me for a while, no? Maria, what does this mean? We are not yet engaged, and I do not like a loser. <laughs> Goodbye, Bill. Come, Mr. Williams. You come to my place. I went with Maria stayed until Bill left the place. Jim told me later that Sally was at their cabin when he got back. Bill was desolate. Don't worry, Bill. You win another race. Maybe we haven't trained the dogs enough. That new pup is just about ready for the team. He'll fill up the weak spot in it. Uh, no, I'm, I'm never going to race again, Sally. Oh, don't be silly. Of course you will. Well, but Dad lost most of his money on me. Maybe I'll have to sell my team. If you do, I'll make my dad buy it, and you can still race it. Please, Bill, don't feel so bad. Oh, Sally. Now, oh, are you beautiful? What? Why, Bill, I've I... made such a fool of myself, and you've been so swell about it. I don't know what was wrong with me. Let's not talk about it, Bill. It's so wonderful to have you back again. Sally was a different girl the next day, sir. Bill was still pretty low, huh? Till I told him who I was. You announced your own identity? Oh, yes, sir. I was automatically disqualified until Bill won the race after all. If you could have seen Sally and Bill after that, sir, I'm, I'm sure you... Hmm. I can see what you mean. Well, this changes the picture considerably. You mean I'm uh, excused, sir? Not so fast, Sergeant, not so fast. You're excused on condition that if you ever enter another race, with permission, mind you... <laughs> You let me know in time. Oh. I'd like to see that dog of yours win it. Well, thank you, sir. <laughs> and you'll see him win it, too. <laughs> Won't he, boy? copyrighted dramas originate in the studios of WXYZ Detroit, and all characters, names, places, and incidents used are fictitious. They are sent to you each week at the same time. You Holder speaking. This is the Michigan Radio Network.